This lesson is for FST Lesson 7-2 on Polynomial Models and Equations. One quick note on the homework before you get started. Question number 7 in the homework has an error. The table should read x0, y0. So we're going to be using the Polynomial Difference Theorem today, and that will help you determine the degree of the polynomial. So to perform the Polynomial Difference Theorem, you'll take the number of differences or subtractions from the y values, and it'll tell you what degree it is. From there, I'll show you how to use your CAS calculator to come up with the polynomial itself. When you do your subtractions, it's very important that you go from right to left. That's a little different from how we normally do subtractions, uh, simply because the larger numbers in these tables typically are on the right-hand side. When you do your subtractions, I like to do these little v's or these little hooks. These are not part of the actual method itself, so if you would like to omit those, that is perfectly fine. So if we subtract from right to left, 4 minus 1 is 3, 10 minus 4 is 6, 20 minus 10 is 10, and so on. Try to be somewhat organized as you go, keeping the numbers uniform horizontally. Notice how we're putting the answers in between the values that we're given. Again, that just kind of helps us keep things in order. We're going to continue this process until a pattern is arrived at, and we haven't found that pattern yet, so we're going to continue. Now we're going to treat the answers that we just got like the original y values, so we continue to subtract from right to left. So 6 minus 3 is 3, 10 minus 6 is 4, 15 minus 10 is 5, and so on. We're going to continue with one more step on this particular example, and what you'll find here is that when we do 4 minus 3, 5 minus 4, and 6 minus 5, we get three numbers in a row that are the same. As soon as you get to that point, then you know that you can quit and you have arrived at the degree of the polynomial. The degree of the polynomial indicates, is indicated by the number of differences that it took you to arrive at all numbers being the same. So in this particular example, it took us three sets of differences to arrive at all three numbers being the same at the end. Be careful here, the degree is not the value of the number that you get at the end, but how many differences it took you to get there. So we would say on this one, this is a degree 3 problem. So let's talk a little bit further about what that means. So for the next portion of our notes for today, we're going to talk about once you know the degree, now you're going to use your CAS and or regression on your CAS to find the actual polynomial itself. So when you're working with degree 2 problems, remember that those are called quadratics and those will be of the format ax squared plus bx plus c. If you're working with a cubic, that would be a degree 3 situation, and those equations or polynomials are going to look like ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So your calculator will generate a, b, c, and d when you use regression. And finally, uh, degree 4 is called a quartic, not to be confused with quadratic, a quartic will look like ax to the fourth plus bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e. So when you're doing regression on your cast, it'll give you a, b, c, d, and e values. Keep in mind that there are degrees 5 and 6 and so on, but typically 2, 3, and 4 are the ones that you'll be responsible for in this class. Once you know the degree and you know what type of regression you're going to be using, then you can type your data from the original table into a spreadsheet, highlight both columns using the up arrow and the shift key, then choose menu, statistics, stat calculations, and the type of regression that you've decided, and the calculator will generate your A's, B's, C's, and so on for you. So let's go ahead and try that with our example that we're using. Go ahead and type in this data from this table into the spreadsheet. The X row will go in column A, the Y row should go in column B, and I'll have you pause the video right now to accomplish that. Once you've gotten the table into your CAS, go ahead and highlight both columns. So again, up arrow to highlight one column, then use your shift key, also located underneath the blue button if you have a gray calculator and shift to the right or to the left to highlight both columns. Now choose Menu, Statistics, Stat Calculations, and then we're choosing Cubic because our example was a degree 3. 
In the pop-up window, again, just verify that you're choosing the progression that you intended to. A and B are our two columns, that is correct. The equation is going to be saved in this particular function number. If your function number is different from mine, that's still OK. And go ahead and hit OK. What you'll see here is that, again, it tells you what type of regression it did. Down here it tells you what the equation should look like. If your calculator cuts the cell off, know that you can click in that cell and see what it says. And then let's scroll down to find all of our values. So the A value was 0.16 repeating, the B value is 0.5, the C value is 0.3 repeating, and the D value looks a little funny. This is just a number in scientific notation. It means negative 7 times 10 to the negative 12th power. And that means you're basically going to move the decimal point on the negative 7 12 places to the left. If you did that, you'd get a very, very small decimal, so we're just going to represent that that number is the number 0. So let's go ahead and record those results on our homework, or on our notes. So what we got was y equals 0.16 repeating x cubed plus 0.5x squared plus 0.3 repeating x plus 0. If you don't want to put the plus 0, that's perfectly fine. Know that if you plugged in all of these coordinates for x and for y, into this polynomial, they would all give you a true statement. Let's go ahead and have go ahead and have you practice now with problems four and number five in the homework. For both of these, you are simply going to find the degree using the finite differences theorem. Go ahead and try that by just subtracting on both. Pause the video, and when you're ready, go ahead and turn the video back on, and you can check your answers. So again, you're just finding the degree on these. You'll find that on number four, if you subtract, it takes you three tries before the numbers start to repeat. Just a reminder here, the value that you get at the end is not the value that you're looking for. You have to count how many differences it took to get to the same value three times in a row. So three is our degree, not the number six. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and find the polynomial, but they don't ask you to in this question. On question five in the homework, you'll find that when you start doing your differences, the numbers don't really get you anywhere. So there are instances where the polynomial, the table that you're working with is not a polynomial at all. There are other types of equations, like exponentials, which cannot be put in polynomial form. So watch out for the fact that there may be some times where you'll say that the problem that you're working with is not even a polynomial at all. One final question that I'd like you to try, this one. Again, type it in on your spreadsheet, figure out what the degree is by hand, and then go ahead and do regression. So I want you to figure out the degree first, and then go ahead and find the equation as well using regression. So again, type that in, figure that out, pause the video, and I'll reveal the answer shortly. So if you're all done doing this question, you should have found that, again, this was a degree 3. Purely coincidence that all of our examples today are the same degree. And then when you type it in on your CAS and do cubic regression, you should get a 1 for A, a negative 1 for B, a 5 for C, and again, a 0 for D. One final note before we're done with the lesson. The lesson talks about tetrahedral numbers, so feel free to do some research online about those two topics. And also, to help you visualize what a tetrahedral number is, uh, try playing a very old video game called Cubert. It's this little orange guy who hops around on this pyramid of cubes. And to me, that's what I always think of when I hear the word tetrahedral. Tetrahedral is not something that is within the scope of this class. It's not a topic that you need to know about. However, it is mentioned in the homework, so I thought I would at least mention it here.